Just yesterday afternoon, SpaceX released the full buoy camera angle of Starship's upper stage landing burn and splashdown. This is the first time we've seen a camera angle of this maneuver that isn't on the ship in daylight since the original 10 and 15 kilometer test flights years ago. Its quality also highlights why SpaceX changed the launch time specifically to increase its ability to make visual observations during this exact mission milestone. We get a much better idea of the speed and flip maneuver, along with the state of the ship. Here I'll go more in depth into the new footage, what it tells us about reentry, future catch attempts, and more. The video, released by SpaceX, is 23 seconds long and starts right before the ship ignites its Raptor engines. They tweeted saying, Starship landing burn and splashdown in the Indian Ocean. At the very start, the ship is still horizontal and in its belly flop position. It then ignites its three sea level Raptor engines, which immediately swing the bottom of the ship to the other side. We can then see the engines gimbling as they counter the swing motion to align the ship vertically. One of the three engines shuts off and it slowly lowers toward the water before cutting its remaining two engines and then impacting the sea. This is where the new video ends. Taking a closer look, there are quite a few extra details we can make out. One in particular is the accuracy. This seems to be a stationary buoy camera like what we've seen in the past and the ship lands right in front of it. It also highlights how much the ship moves horizontally when completing its swing maneuver. At the start of the video, the stage is way left of the camera before the initial engine ignition sends it all the way over toward the camera and designated landing location. Keep in mind, there are plans to start catching the ship as soon as two launches from now. A similar maneuver would need to take place right before it swings between the chopsticks and is caught out of midair. Another interesting detail that this video highlights is the state of the ship. Before it touches down in the water, you can clearly see the charring and marks left from the reentry heating. That being said, unlike the last launch where SpaceX stripped the entire heat shield and added in additional ablative material, they instead wanted to somewhat test the limits of what the ship could handle. For this reason, among others, they took away parts of the heat shield in areas where future catch hardware could be. Even still, while definitely charred, it survived in one whole piece. Comparing this new angle with onboard telemetry also highlights the speed of this maneuver. Right before engine ignition, the ship is traveling over 300 kilometers an hour and is just under one kilometer high. Over the next 20 seconds, it slows down to a low of six kilometers an hour before splashdown. This was also after a more aggressive reentry profile than usual. Before the launch, SpaceX was quoted saying, we're going to fly the ship at an aggressive angle of attack once it's moving slower than the speed of sound. This means we'll be flying nose down instead of our usual belly flop orientation during final descent. This will no doubt stress the limits of the flap's ability to maintain control, but it will be a chance to get real flight data on what our limits actually are. So to put it as bluntly as possible, do not be surprised if this is not a smooth flight to splashdown today. We are intentionally looking for how far we can push and discover the vehicle's true limits as we plan for future ship return and catch, they said. Despite this, the flaps and ship held up and were able to complete the landing burn. For context, the ship was the last V-1 Starship variant set to fly. The next ship expected to be used on Flight 7 is a V-2 variant. That newer version of Starship has the forward flaps shifted leeward. This is meant to help improve reliability, ease of manufacturing, and payload to orbit. It's also meant to withstand re-entry heating much better than what we've seen so far on Flights 1 through 6 with Starship V-1. Of the flights that included an upper stage re-entry, we've now seen a few examples of the flaps being the weak points. This mainly involves burn through or just additional heating. On the most recent flight, for example, there was an obvious hot spot on the corner of one of the forward flaps. At T plus 58 minutes and 10 seconds, the call came that Starship was on a good trajectory and that external temperatures were coming down. They then provided the additional camera angle showing the flaps where it looked like there might have been a bit of burn through at the tip of the forward flap. In another close-up, they confirmed that there was definitely some extra heating on that specific location. Fortunately, by the time it became obvious, the ship was starting to cool down rapidly. In theory, these issues should be solved with the newer version of Starship. Focusing back on the footage, you can actually see what looks like the buoy from Starship's onboard cameras while it's completing its landing burn. This gives an idea of its proximity. After the launch, Elon Musk tweeted saying, successful ocean landing of Starship. We will do one more ocean landing of the ship. If that goes well, then SpaceX will attempt to catch the ship with the tower. This would be an ambitious timeline, but not completely out of the question. In order for that to work, it would likely make more sense if both launch towers were operational and ready to catch returning rocket stages. That being said, it would be a few hours after launch before the ship made its way around the Earth and re-entered the atmosphere. That's also assuming the ship just does one go around rather than multiple, something we will likely hear more about in the coming months. A big focus for SpaceX since the start of launching Starship has been its heat shield. It's one thing to make a heat shield that protects Starship for one re-entry, and another that protects it for continued launches with practically no refurbishment in between. Back after Flight 4, Musk said, we're going to replace the whole heat shield on the ship. So the new heat shield is about twice as strong as the ones that were on the last flight. 
We want to put an ablative secondary structure, basically a blade of protection behind the tile so that if a tile cracks or comes loose, it doesn't cook the rocket. In a different quote, when talking about the addition of the ablative material, he said, it's not good for reuse, but it's good for saving your bud if a tile cracks or falls off. It's very tricky to put these tiles and have them work well because the tiles are ceramic. They're like a coffee cup or a dinner plate. So you have a whole bunch of dinner plates on a rocket that is shaking. It's shrinking cryogenically with the propellant and then expanding under pressure, and then the tiles are expanding when they get hot. So there's a lot of expansion and contraction happening while trying to keep all these brittle tiles from cracking or breaking off, he said. If all that wasn't enough, they've started work on a heat shield designed specifically for the Martian atmosphere. During the Flight 6 livestream before liftoff, they showcased some of the testing that's been going on for the specific tile. They were quoted saying, One unique aspect of a trip to Mars is a different condition the ship will see when entering the Martian atmosphere. Now, it's difficult to simulate Mars' atmosphere when re-entering on Earth, so we've been testing a variety of heat shield materials inside a specialized plasma jet chamber at the University of Illinois, where we're able to more closely simulate Mars's 95% carbon dioxide atmosphere. They went on to say, this is important testing. The intense heat of entry will cause the CO2 to break down into its base elements, exposing Starship to atomic oxygen, which increases surface heating and can cause materials to oxidize or start to break down. Spacecraft entering over Mars encountered more than twice the amount of atomic oxygen at their peak when compared to Earth. As we continue to test, we'll learn more about what makes a good heat shield for Mars, they said. In other words, they have their plate full with Starship's heat shield. In addition to all these changes, SpaceX has already performed a cryo test on the ship for Flight 7. Some of the upgrades besides the flaps include a larger size and propellant capacity, and other improvements related to redundancy and mission operation. What's clear from everything we've seen so far is that there still is a lot of work left, but the company is confident they're on the right track. With the recent draft assessment from the FAA highlighting the opportunity for 25 booster and 25 ship catch attempts, they definitely will have plenty of opportunities to test hardware and iterate the vehicle's design. In that assessment, the agency is quoted saying, The FAA has concluded that the modification of SpaceX's existing vehicle operator license for Starship slash Super Heavy conforms to the prior environmental documentation, consistent with the data contained in the 2022 PEA that there are no significant environmental changes, and all conditions and requirements of the prior approval have been met or will be met in the current action. This is a pretty big deal for the company and will impact the future launch operations. They probably won't launch 25 times, but they will try their best to launch as frequently as possible. In the new buoy video released by SpaceX, we get to see the entire flip maneuver in daylight. This highlights the accuracy of the flip in addition to the ship's state after re-entry and the more aggressive flight profile. The purpose of launching later was in order to provide a better view, which it did. We will have to wait and see how it progresses and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.